Welcome to the History of Christmas, day number four. Let's take a look at Joseph. He was Jesus' earthly father and also the husband to Mary, who was the mother of Jesus. We don't know a lot about Joseph. He only appears a couple times in the Gospels. So the first time he appears, he's with Mary and he is engaged to her. And then she comes to him with some not so good news, right? But he's very gracious about that news. Matthew 1 verse 18 says, This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. How awesome that he was so obedient to do that. The second time we see Joseph, he's being obedient to the decree that went out that there's going to be a census, and everyone had to go to their own city to be taxed and to be counted. So he's being very obedient. He packed up Mary on a donkey, and they went all the way to Bethlehem. Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The third time we see Joseph, he and his wife Mary are taking Jesus up to the temple to present him and to offer a sacrifice to the Lord, being obedient to the law. Luke 2.21 talks about Jesus being presented in the temple. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Isn't it great to read that Joseph was an amazing father and followed the laws of the Lord? The fourth time we read about Joseph, he's taking his family to escape to Egypt so that Jesus would not be killed because Herod had said all the little baby boys two years and under should be killed. Matthew 2 verse 13, the escape to Egypt. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Again, isn't it great that Joseph is so obedient? I mean, it seems crazy. Take your family and go to Egypt in the middle of the night, but he was obedient, and that's what spared Jesus' life, and we're really grateful for that. And then the fifth time we see Joseph, he has lost his son. The family had gone to Jerusalem to worship. How do you lose the Son of God? I don't know, but he did. I mean, as parents, we've all lost our kids, right? I know I've lost them a couple times. So anyway, the whole family went to Jerusalem. They thought they were going back as part of the family. They thought, oh, Jesus is with his cousins or someone else. And three days later, they realized he was not. So they lost the Son of God for three days. Let's read that story. Luke 2, verse 41, the boy Jesus at the temple. Every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among the friends and relatives. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. 
After three days, three whole days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked, didn't you know I would be in my father's house? Great answer. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So again, it's okay. He lost his kid, but Joseph was a great father. He had raised a very obedient son. I mean, look at, he was very polite to the people in the temple and he was obedient, went back and lived under his mom and dad um, for the rest of Joseph's life. And then we don't really hear much more of Joseph after this, but we believe that he died before Jesus started his public ministry. But what an amazing, humble man and what a perfect man to be Jesus's earthly father. We're so thankful for Joseph. So I hope today you're thankful for your earthly father and your heavenly father. And just think of some of the things that he did. He was just so obedient. He was gracious to Mary and didn't want to make a public spectacle of her. And he was so obedient to not even sleep with Mary, right? Until they had had Jesus. And then also he was just a good father, a good provider and a carpenter. So think of all those great characteristics today as you go about your day. Try to be a little bit like Joseph. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. And I would love to answer any questions you may have about faith in Jesus. You can contact me through my website, nancyjoytoyou.com.